MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limits. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging it will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath. This is testing their ability to produce food at a very high standard when the pressure's on. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. It's just been one of those amazing journeys that you go through to see exactly who's going to shine out of all the people that we saw. From over a thousand applicants, now only seven remain, battling it out for the first ever MasterChef Ireland title. They've had to fight hard for their place. I'm not a habit of repeating myself. Your orange marmalade is burnt. Start again, throw it out. Get it right first before you start adding your own twists. And things are going to get even tougher. Can I have two fish and two guinea fold, please? Yes. I've lost the orders. Come on, come on, come on, finish it, finish it. As they try out a brand new style of cooking. I think this is shocking. Today, the MasterChef contestants will be faced with their biggest challenge to date. We're in the top seven now. I think the time for, you know, showing us around and holding our hands is over. It's really up to every competitor now to push on and do better. I know that the competition is going to get much tougher. You know, it's going to be hard graft from here on in. There's not going to be any easy options, so we're all going to have to up the game. Working in the kitchen of Ananda, one of Ireland's top Indian restaurants, renowned for bringing a modern twist to their cuisine, the contestants will be completing their first ever full restaurant service to Ananda's paying customers. The fact that everybody is paying for their meal has upped the stakes a lot. So the judges will want it to a certain standard, so will Ananda. Yeah, I'm nervous about that side of it. Run by award-winning executive chef Sunil Guy, they must ensure that his reputation for innovation and quality remains intact. How are you guys? Welcome to Ananda. All of you will be working in my kitchen today. Three of you will be doing the lunch service and four will go for the dinner, all right? So Mary will be doing the crab meat. Christine will be doing the main course for sea bass. And Clara Ann will be doing the guinea fowl. And for this evening, Mike, you'll be doing the scallops. Brady, you're on goat cheese. Shane, you're doing the lamb. And Pierce, you're going to do all the dessert. So best of luck. Thank you. Sure, sure. I think today is going to be a serious challenge. I've made it clear that desserts wouldn't be my forte and wouldn't be my strong point. But they obviously want to see a bit more of that from me. Hopefully, I can pull it off. It's going to be a big learning day for them today. We're now moving into a service and moving into realistic working environments. It's really important that our guys are organised and that they listen and that they communicate and that they're fully aware of what's expected of them. There is going to be an element of worry that, you know, what we saw in the Shelbourne, uh, there was a real issue of timing. Hmm. Um, hmm. The ones that were prepared in time for service, the taste wasn't there. And the guys who were late, the taste was there. There really is no time for that today. Customers are going to be here, they're going to be sitting down, they're going to be ordering. I think it's really important that there, there's a real sense of urgency. And this is serious now, you know? So you just have to show us, you know, who has it and who doesn't have it. First up are Christine, Mary and Claire Ann on the lunch service. Each are solely responsible for all orders of the dish they have been assigned from today's menu. You're doing the crab meat, is it? I'm doing the crab meat. You're doing the crab meat, okay. Cooking a crab and mango starter will be 28-year-old Mary. I want mango to come up with the crab meat, okay? So you do it like that, okay? Last time in the Shelburne, Mary worked erratically and served up late. You're not concentrating on what you're doing. You've taken your eye off it and no, it's burnt. Actually, I... This is a mess. Conversation's over. I need to address my issues with pressure. You know, I, I really let it get to me. I think that's going to be one of my biggest challenges. 
I just really hope that today she doesn't let us down in terms of her typical untidiness. If you're going to work in mess, you produce a bit of a mess, and I don't think she's fully grasped that yet. Yeah. So that's your crab meat. I want the plate to be like this. Yes, chef. No compromise. 21-year-old Christine will be cooking sea bass with a coconut ginger sauce and curried mash. The thing is, you need to cook the fish perfectly. Perfectly, yeah. Okay? Yeah. The skin has to be crisp, not burnt. Yeah. I really want to see her able to cook a decent piece of fish, you know, correctly, on time. You know, if you think of the, the French box, her fish was way overcooked. Yeah, you put it in way too early. The pressure got on top of you, you can cook. So don't let the pressure phase you. I'm feeling a bit nervous today about today's challenge. There's going to be a lot of things going on at the one time, so you're going to have to really stay focused. So it's a big challenge today, so a bit nervous, but I think we have to just go in today and just do our best. Are you scared? No. A little. <laughs> <laughs> 34-year-old Claire-Anne's main course will be guinea fowl served with a Kashmiri chilli sauce. Don't overcook it, otherwise it gets very dry. OK. At the moment, I'm feeling quite excited about getting um, to cook, but I'm a little bit aware of the fact that um, we're going to have a huge number of people coming in any minute now, and that I best get ready to feed them. It's going to be abstract, I've decided. Day and Ananda is filling up with hungry customers, many of whom have been regulars to the restaurant since it opened in Dundrum three years ago. For the main, I'm going to have the pan fried sea bass. Right, sir. Thank you very much. The chicken supreme for a start yes. and the sea bass for the main course. And with orders being taken, Mary, Christine, and Claire Anne must now complete their first ever restaurant service. Okay, the first order one crab, one chicken, three potato cakes. Three fish, one guinea fowl, one aubergine. Yes, chef. Yes. The pressure is immediately on Mary to get her crab meat starter out and not hold up service. New order, two chicken, one potato cake, one crab. Hey, can I have the starter pickup, please, now? This should not be on that. Start from here. It should not touch the bottom. Okay, sorry. Can you do that again, please, for me? Yes, yes. Please. With Mary having to replate her dishes, time is now against her, and the orders are relentless. Two crab, one potato, two chicken, one crab, one chicken, one fish, two crab, one potato cake, two chicken. It's become really obvious to me that there's just no room for mess in these kitchens. If you're not prepared before you start service, you will fall apart. Can I have two crabs, please? Crab on the way, chef. OK, can we have the order taken, please, now? Yeah, ready to go. Well done. Thanks, chef. Back on track, and with the first table served, it's time for Christine and Claire Anne to start their mains. Uh, the start is gone. Start is gone for the first table. First table, OK. Both the sea bass and guinea fowl are proving popular with lots of orders for both. You have nine fish to see. Yeah. You have five guinea fowl working, yeah? Five guinea fowl. Five yeah. guinea fowl. With both dishes having to be served at the same time, it's key that they don't get too far ahead or behind one another. Two more minutes now on this fish and we're. No problem, darling. Thank you. You're doing the skin side first, yeah? Yes, skin side first. That's the skin. Oh, sorry. Cook it nicely. I did. Yeah, don't, don't get dense. OK, yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Meanwhile, Mary has found her feet, and the crab meat orders are going out on time. Chef, are there any more starches, Chef? That's it? I think so. 
I think I performed well. You know, I did get quite a, a lot of orders, so it's, it's, it's difficult to keep, keep, keep track of things. But, um, no, I really enjoyed it. I got into the swing of things. The crab meat was cooked to perfection, crispy on the outside, tender in the inside, and it was cooked to perfection. It was perfect. I think it's absolutely excellent, really well presented. I'd be very happy to pay for this dish anywhere. I had the crab meat starter, and that was amazing. I just love the, the different textures in both the styles. So it was just great. And thanks to the chef. Okay, can I have table 14, please? Pick up mains. Yes. With all the starters served, the pressure is now on Christine and Claire Anne to get their mains out as quickly as possible. Come on, come on, come on, finish it, finish yeah, it. Yeah, okay. And I need two fish and two more guinea fowls. So total three fish in total. Too much chili oil, too much sauce. Every plate? Yeah, too much sauce. Okay. As Claire Ann is sent back to replate, the orders are coming in thick and fast. Okay, new order. Two fish, one aubergine, two guinea fowl. Is guinea fowl coming? Yeah. Much better. That was a really, really busy, shocking service. Um, Super busy. Two guinea fowl, two one aubergine, two fish. Two guinea fowl. How many starters waiting? Oh shit. I don't think I have experienced anything like that before. You know, it was really daunting. It was just a matter of speed today, I think, more than anything else. Guinea fowl is already here. The fish is still not cooked. One fish now. Yeah. Good With Claire Ann and Christine now out of sync and a build-up of sea bass orders, Sunil and his team have to step in to clear the backlog. Finish the fish, finish the fish, please. Can I have two fish and two guinea fowl, please? Yes, chef. I'm the skin is burning. It's better to take it out now. Put the sauce. Today, it was really hard with service because your main course had to go with somebody else's. But I didn't panic. I just kept going. Look, I couldn't do anything about it. There's no point panicking. I'm waiting on two guinea fowl, please. Excellent. Thank you. Need a bit of more seasoning then. That's oh, it. OK. Thank you, chef. Table 25, ready to go. And with all hands on deck, the orders start to flow out of the kitchen. Very nice. Thank you. I'm not even sure how many people that I served today. I'd say it was probably over 20, but I quite enjoyed it. Here. Yes, please. Okay, guys, that's end of service. And well done. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Moderately happy. You know, I'm just I wonder how the chef feels about things, you know. I know he was waiting that bit longer, but I didn't want to send out something unless it was right. Presentation needed a bit of finesse, so it was tough, it was tough, but you know, a uh, very good day. Loved it, really did now enjoy it. I've had the sea bass today. And um, the sea bass itself was cooked really well, but uh, the potatoes were a bit salty, and um, I don't think it was quite up to and under standards. The sea bass was be beautifully cooked, uh, very tender, um, lovely mix with the potato and the lovely kick from the coconut as well, absolutely gorgeous. Just loved it. I think some of the other dishes were presented better, um, but I think overall the, it, the taste is really what stands out. It was a bit manic, to be honest. So I don't think I would be happy, but I'm delighted I get through it and I did the best I could with the abilities I have at the moment. I would really recommend the chef who has cooked this uh, Giri Paul. It's a different flavor, chili flavor, which is very good combination. And really it's good. I love that. The guinea fowl is, is very tender, um, it's very well cooked. I think the sauce is very spicy, but I do like spicy sauces. 
and the standard I've found is consistent. I thought the sauce uh, lacked the spice that I thought it would have in an Indian restaurant. Um, the guinea fowl itself, I thought it lacked salt. It's not what I expected in this restaurant. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Lunchtime service over, and as the customers pay up and leave, the second team are gearing up for their evening service. Working in Ananda in Dundrum, the MasterChef contestants are today carrying out their first ever restaurant service. This is a phenomenal restaurant, you know, it's got a great pedigree, got great chefs in it, using fantastic ingredients, and it's a style of food that I really like and I'm very interested in. Completing the dinner service, the remaining four have each been assigned their own dish. So the scallop is with the cauliflower of textures with the cauliflower. Cauliflower puree, yeah. cauliflower grit, and then you have a cauliflower form. Cooking spice-crusted scallops with textures of cauliflower, Mike will be responsible for one of Ananda's most popular starters. It's only one minute each side, not more than that. I'm just concerned that sometimes he likes to do his own thing, thinking he's organised, and then suddenly he's forgotten something. In the Shelburne, Mike made a basic error. He used egg yolk instead of whole eggs, and it was quite crumbly. It wasn't really nice to eat. This dish, it's all about little nuances, little flavours and presentation. We're down to the final seven now. There's no mistakes allowed anymore. You guys can taste that? I think being down to the top seven, while it's reassuring to know you've gotten this far, it's, you know, the, the competition has gotten tougher. We are serving this with the chutney and tomato foam. Also doing a starter, 28-year-old Brigine will be making goat's cheese potato cakes with a Nepalese chutney. I think she's got some uh, a foam on there, so she'll need to be relatively organised in terms of that being stable. So her timing is actually imperative here. There's going to be no excuses today. This is not a time to not serve up. You've no choice. It has to be out there on the pass, ready to go on time and, and cooked well. So that will be pressure. Shane, how are you? Good. We'll start off with the lamb. Make sure pan is hot enough. Making lamb rack with chickpeas and sweet potato, 40-year-old Shane will be the only contestant cooking a main course. Lamb's a very popular dish, so I'm expecting to be quite busy. I'll be under a lot of pressure, and the judges are going to be watching that. It's going to be a focal point of the service, Shane. This is going to be real pressure for him today. When he's comfortable, he's OK. It's when he feels uncomfortable in a situation mm. where it all falls apart and he panics. During his pastry service in the Shelburne, Shane did not impress. What stage did you put the gelatine in this? I put it on the wrong stage, Gary. Put it on the wrong stage. That's why it's not quinella. Can he now prove that he has that second speed the judges have been looking for? I think it's, for me, it's actually believing in myself. And I think that's what stopped me sometimes. But I think I can do it. And finally, responsible for the only dessert on tonight's menu will be 34-year-old Pierce. Other than caramelising his poached pear, Pierce's dish with carrot pudding and creme fraiche sorbet involves no cooking. But with over 12 elements to plate up and an entire restaurant to serve, he will need to move quickly. I mean, Pierce took an hour to chop a pineapple in the Shelburne and it frustrated all the other guys. So that's why today we've given him a dessert where there's a lot involved because he's going to be responsible for every dessert in the room. This will be Pierce's third dessert challenge so far. And after a time management disaster in the Shelburne... This dessert takes two and a half hours to do. It's after taking you five and a half hours. Can he finally overcome his dessert demons? Definitely after the last challenge at the Shelburne, you know, I thought I was going home. Every challenge is rightly important, so yeah, I've got to do really well today. Otherwise, I could be, could be going home very soon. Five p.m. and Ananda is full once again. I've chosen the scallops. My expectations are that they will be cooked to perfection, not overcooked, not rubbery. I'm going to order the lamb, and what I'm looking for is uh, perfectly cooked, not overdone, um, nice and pink in the middle. The pull of poached pear and car caramelised carrots for a dessert is fantastic if it works, but yes, critical 100%. Two scallops, one lamb chop, one chicken. Two goat cheese, one chicken, one scallop. 
Service on, and it's up to Bridgine and Mike to get it off to a smooth start. Chef, how long to first call in mains? Another five to eight minutes. Five minutes? Five to eight minutes for pickup. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I get the order, please? Two goat cheese, one scallop, one chicken, please. Yes, Chef. I'm waiting on two goat cheese, one scallop. The yes, Chef. All right, guys, new order in. Three goat cheese, three scallops, mains, two sea bass, two chicken, two lamb chops, medium. Yes, Chef. With Bridgine and Mike racing ahead, Shane must keep track of all his different lamb orders. How many lamb chops? Ten portion, yeah? Out of them, five are medium rare. But with lots of requests for the lamb and each needing to be done to order, it's not long before Shane starts to struggle. The, the order is for medium rare. This is rare. Medium rare? Yeah. OK. And with his first order back on the grill, a backlog quickly forms. Me order, three sea bass, two rongi chop rare, lamb chops rare. I need one lamb chops, please. Out now. I've lost the orders. I can't even, I know I have to put on four, six more, I can't remember, Chef. There were five medium rares. Five medium rares. Three mediums, two medium well, and there's more orders now. Okay, I... 13, 14 lamb. Five medium rare, two medium. I can't think. Yeah. I'm waiting for three scallops and three goat cheesecakes. And after that, you have six more goat cheese, yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Meanwhile, Brigine has kept on top of her orders with no delays for the diners. It's very busy in there. Like, there's nothing you can compare it to. You've got to have three, you've got to have two, you've got to have one. Um, but then after the first two, you're just into the flow. Seven goat cheese more to go. Yes, chef. After this three. Yes, chef. Come on, try. You're trying them. However, Mike is now starting to make some mistakes. See, they're, they're not seared properly because the pan is not very hot. You're, you're frying them. People are paying for this food, so, I mean, chef has to check every dish going out. Every dish has to be perfect. Having fried his scallops, Mike is now plating up ahead of Brigine. You have done your scallops? I this is no chef. use. Sorry, Chef. You know? Yep. Sir, it's quite hectic. I took up one dish, I sent it out too fast without talking to Breeding, but um, learned from that and we just carried on. Yep. One lamb chop rare and one medium. Almost an hour into service, though, and Shane is still struggling to get on top of his orders. Shane, this is not seared properly. No? You're losing all the juices. I'm going to get Abhijit to help you. Yes. To, to take out the orders now. Okay, we are waiting for it. Abhijit, help him out. We need the lamb out now. I think it was a very hard station. Just started getting out of control already. Chef, can we have it now, please? Yes, Chef. Very nice, Chef. We're getting there. And with help from Sunil's chef, the lamb dishes finally start to go out to the waiting diners. You have six more after that. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Chef. Very nice. You're getting there. Let's put it on the pass. Are you good to go now on, on your own? I still need help, I would say. All right, okay, no problem. <laughs> Chef, I need one lamb chops, medium well. Okay. With Shane still needing help, Brigine and Mike are back in sync and plating up their last orders. I'm very aware of the fact that there's paying diners out there, so I don't want anybody going away dissatisfied with what we serve up today, and especially with what I serve up today, so hopefully they're all happy. My goat's cheese is excellent. Slightly spicy on the chutney, but it complements the, the potato cakes really well, and uh, it's very, very nice. I'm having the goat's cheese, and they are absolutely gorgeous, and they're, they're well up the standard. It's absolutely beautiful, and the way it's presented is, is unbelievable. I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as it is. With compliments all round for Bridgine, can Mike's scallop starter win as much favour? I'm really, really surprised. They're cooked lovely. They really are. The, the texture's perfect. They seem to be cooked just... They're a little cold. A bit disappointed about that. But, no, really surprised and, and really happy. I've had this dish many times here before, 
the tastes are good, but there's not as it's not as flavorsome as it, as it usually is. Uh, but overall, it's it's nicely executed. Okay, guys, very well done. You can clean up the area. Yes, sir. Starters finished, and with most of the tables beginning to get their mains, Pierce can finally start plating up desserts for the entire restaurant. Chef, I'm waiting on four desserts. Four, and after that, two, and then three. Four, two, Five three. more. Two, Chef, two more coming. Pierce. Yes, Chef. Are you not caramelizing the yes, pear, chef. are you? Not the both sides. Both sides, Chef. Yes, Chef. 24, please. One medium fast. Chef. One medium fast. One medium only. If your pan is not hot. Oh, OK, sorry, yes. Back working on his own, Shane has just one last table to serve. Come on, let's get it sorted now. That's the last order going. I am disappointed that I didn't get to fulfill my station, that I didn't get in control of it. That was my task. That's what I had to do. It's infuriating to think that I didn't do it. I wasn't going to give up. This is my job. I had to do it. But uh, to be honest, I'm worried, you know, so. We just have to wait to see what happens. Fingers crossed. OK, guys. Main's finished. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you for your help, guys. Right. Thank you. Well, I've ordered lamb for the main course. Uh, I've had it done uh, medium, uh, so there's just the right amount of pink. And it's absolutely the most succulent lamb I've had in a very long time. So I've absolutely no issues with it. Chickpeas are a little more spicy comparatively. The lamb is more subtle. So when you have them together, they just blend so well. It's actually really, really good. It took a while to come out, but it was worth the wait, I think. They must be very busy in there. Chef, new order, six more desserts. Six more, yes, Chef. Under pressure, Pierce's plating up has slowed down. Your pair need to be standing. Some of them are lying down, some of them are standing. They need Sorry, to go Chef. one way. OK, All right? Sorry, Chef. And with service nearing an end, he started to fall behind on his orders. Pick up, please. And with a last minute order for 10 more desserts, Pierce needs to plate up as quickly as possible. Up until now, I must say, I don't think I've handled the pressure incredibly well. Hopefully, from here on in, I can control the nerves a bit better. However, after a 20-minute wait, Chef Sunil is getting anxious. So is the 10 desserts gone? The 10 here now is taking, taking long. Do you need help? Yeah, I could do with the help, help with caramelizing the pears, Chef. Could you help them out, please? Just save some time, Chef. I was a little bit under pressure getting those 10 dishes out. Uh, as I said, there's so many elements on the plate, you know, dessert isn't my strong point. So I think I did, did pretty well with that. I think I handled the pressure all right and got on with it and did OK. Of the courses I've had, everything has been fantastic. Dessert would lack a little in my, in my estimation. It just wasn't, it just didn't really do it for me. Personally. That was very nicely presented and uh, a nice mixture of colours on the plate and very neatly presented. Really enjoyed it. Everything sat so well together, it was really clean on the palate, really fresh um, and I feel really satisfied after it. It was great. It was their first real service today. Yeah. First time working in a, in a kitchen as amateurs. Some of them were good. Yeah. Bridine was very good for the goat cheese today. You know, she yeah. was very organized. She yeah. was listening to the orders. We chose the particular dishes for the particular characters today to see who would work better in each section. I think the Pierce, he's not planning anything. He was not no. thinking what he's doing. Shane was a bit of a problem with him. Pan was not hot, was not searing the lamp properly, and he, and he didn't listen to the orders. There was one person you would give a job to today. I would say that girl. Bridgie. Bridgie. Thanks, Janine. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks My so pleasure. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. What's your Thank you. And with their first real service behind them, there is one final challenge awaiting the contestants.
It's the following morning, and after a long day completing their first ever restaurant service, the seven remaining contestants have been brought to a location on Dublin's south side. Morning, guys, and welcome to Eurasia, Ireland's largest ethnic supermarket. This morning, we want to challenge you to take what you learned yesterday and put your own unique twist on it. Basically, this is the invention test. So back in the MasterChef kitchen, you'll have one hour to create one dish. And now you have 15 minutes to choose those ingredients. So remember, this is not a supermarket sweep. We need you to choose your ingredients wisely. By the way, we will also be joined later by Sunil as a guest, who will be helping us to judge your dishes. The time starts now. Hi, could I have a sea bass, please? I get the uh, two fillets of sea brie. With thousands of ingredients at their fingertips, the contestants must bring together everything that they learned in Ananda yesterday. When I heard today's challenge, I was really scared. I thought this would be my ultimate downfall today, so it was really daunting to go in there and, you know, try and think of a dish. Your brain is racing, trying to figure out a recipe, what's good to cook, what have we learned, and then try to figure out all the ingredients on it. Guys, 10 minutes have gone. You've got five minutes left. The 15 minutes went really, really quickly in the supermarket. I was rushing around a little bit like a headless chicken at one point, um, so I probably put too much in. I suppose maybe I should have thought about it a bit more, how I was going to arrange the dish, and I think you have to have an end product in your head. It wasn't maybe as thought out as it should have been. Guys, time's up. in the MasterChef kitchen, and with their ingredients chosen, the contestants must complete the final part of this challenge. Okay, guys, one dish in one hour, and your time starts now. I'm looking for lightness. I'm looking for somebody who understands the ingredients and understands how little is needed to just enhance. Too many spices will, will kill the dish, won't kill the dish. You won't taste anything. Having cooked fish during yesterday's lunch service, Christine has decided to tackle it again today. I think I've changed immensely since I've gone through the same um, process. This can be my career, you know, this means absolutely everything to me right now. Christine, how are you? Um, OK. What's cooking? Um, so I'm going to do pan seared sea bream. That'll be the fish will be sitting on a bed of the lentils, and then I'm going to do a coconut broth sauce as well. Just keep it nice and light. So it's gonna... a bit like your sauce yesterday. Yeah, I'm taking. I'll, this is. I haven't seen how it's done. I'm going to try and do it myself. You're going to try and replicate yeah, it. Yeah, try, try. Oh, good luck. Keyword there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no giving up now. You have to just keep pushing and keep learning and just doing your utmost to get to the final. You know, that's your dream come true. I think. <laughs> Leaving behind the world of desserts, Pierce has also opted to cook a fish dish. Well, Pierce, tell us. Uh, I'm going to do a spiced um, fillet of sea bass with some mint and fennel rice and a blended smooth tomato masala sauce. You're going to pan fry the fish? I'm going to pan fry the fish, but I'm going to spice it first. I'm going to crust it. I'd absolutely love to go further in the competition. You know, I'd absolutely love to go on and win it. But do I think I'm the best cook in the competition? At this stage, I'm certainly not shining, but maybe I can, I can change that a bit. This experience is like a roller coaster. You know, you're, you have such immense highs and lows within an hour. It's brilliant, but um, it's a bit scary as well. I'm doing kind of like a palatio with spices and salad dipping sauce and um, prawns on skewers with some lemongrass flavours. Some what flavours? Lemongrass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've also... Marinate them, is it? And marinate them, yeah, exactly. Okay. And I'm going to have coriander and mint oil as well. Are you feeling confident? Fairly confident, yeah. Yesterday, Bridgine was on the goat's cheese starter and impressed Sunil the most. 
so the pressure is on to maintain her high standard. I'm really enjoying this and I have the energy and I have the enthusiasm. I'm not broken yet and uh, I definitely have lots more to give. OK, guys, with 30 minutes gone, you have a half an hour left, halfway through. With ingredients totaling over 70 euro, Mary has spent the most on her dish. I'm doing prawns with pea and avocado puree, um, mango salad, and um, a pomegranate reduction. Avocado and peas together. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out and see what, see what, see how it works. I'm gonna puree my avocado first. You know, I'll, I'll figure out as I go along whether I should take an element off or put another on. I think I've probably lost a little bit of confidence over the past few challenges because I'm not cooking my own food. So um, I kind of today I just you know I just need to need to realise that you know I can cook and just you know find the self self belief you know. She's talking about making an avocado and pea puree together, which sounds disgusting. Strange. I've got a lot to prove to the judges. You know, they've allowed me to get to this far. So I've really got to tidy up. No more errors. You know, any mistake at this point, you know, I'm gone. Cooking a classic chicken curry, Mike is hoping to show a flair for balancing flavours. I'm trying to make a little naan um, with just some toasted cumin in it. I'm going to have it with poppadoms. But the, the curry has got to stand out. You know, it's got to have the punch, it's got to have the flavour. You've got to be able to distinct all the spices into it so it's not just one monotone flavour, but it's quite zingy and, and alive and, and, you know, brings everything together. Cool. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Also opting to make a chicken curry is Shane. It's a coriander and ginger oh. curry. There's a lot of uh, coriander seed, is it? There's a lot of coriander seed, yeah. Do you like coriander? I do like coriander. Okay. And I'm going to put a mango, a red onion and chili and lime. Riata with that. Riata. Yeah. Okay. Having failed yesterday to complete his service on his own, Shane has yet to prove that he can work at speed. I just really got stuck into it and got organised and kept going with stuff, cut the head down, sweat was pouring off me. I think not just, you know, from the heat of the kitchen, but just from actually working so fast. If they just make a curry today, that's OK, but yeah. this is Master Chef. I'm hoping for a little bit of what they've seen yesterday, which is a little bit of sophistication. Making a chicken and prawn salad with mouli, okra and pomegranate, Claire Anne's combinations are the most complicated. Do you think you learned enough yesterday for all this? Um, no, but I'm inspired by yesterday to try Good this. answer, good answer. <laughs> I'm going to try and be my bold flavours, but in a delicate way. I kind of feel as if I might be on my last chance, because I think they can see that I'm trying to put what is my style of cooking together. It's important that I don't lose the cooking skills when I concentrate more in the presentation. OK, guys, you have three minutes left. Oh, shit. Just minutes to go, and Mike has ruined his naan breads. I got distracted and, and then toasted. Charred. <laughs> Burnt. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Time is up. After an hour of cooking, the contestants must now face the three judges. First up is Christine with her pan-seared sea bream on a bed of spiced lentils, coconut, ginger and coriander sauce and roasted butternut squash. Sauce needs a bit of more seasoning in it. Okay. Yeah. But the uh, fish is fine, no okay. problems. And your lentils are cooked perfectly. Loads of textures there, it's nice. Shame the skin is not crispier. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a bit more of a crispier yeah. skin. I like the cooking of the fish. I think you've improved there. I don't think you've been too heavy-handed at all, and I think you've really shown that when you don't understand something, you haven't gone over the edge. So I think for that, you should be very proud. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I really don't know if I've done enough. I, you know, I think I did my best today, and I like to think that they respected that, and hopefully it's enough to get through to the next stage. 
Next up is Mike with his chicken on the bone curry, star anise spiced rice, poppadoms and mint yogurt. Flavors are nice. All right, chicken cooked perfect. It's a simple chicken curry and rice for me. You, know, you did the scallop yesterday. Yeah. So I would have thought, you know, you'll do something on that line. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know a nice um, chicken curry. I'm looking for I'm looking for a bit more of a push on what we're doing, a bit more innovation. I really wanted to show that I understood and what Sunil was teaching us yesterday with spices, and that's not enough in this competition. So I should have done better on that. I wasn't happy with the feedback at all. With Mike's chicken curry failing to impress, can Shane's not fully plated version with ginger and chili fare any better? This is a riata. There's a, a sour mango and a sweet mango. What is riata? It's a side dish to go with a curry. Raita is based on yogurt. Yogurt. Sorry, I got the wrong term. So this is a kuchumbar. Thank you. The chicken is slightly overcooked, and there's no taste in it. Shane, I have to be honest, man. I think this is shocking. There's no balance whatsoever. It doesn't look appetizing at all. There's too much spice. It's just a, a, a terrible use of ingredients and just not very appetizing. This has not been well executed at all. Just dry. The chicken is just, it's actually boring. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. I think I'm in that relegation territory. So yeah, I was very disappointed. Mary has made turmeric marinated prawns on an avocado and coconut milk puree served with a mango salsa and pomegranate reduction. Okay. Prawn cooked perfectly, right? But the turmeric is too much in it. It's okay. way bitter. You were the one who spent more money in the uh, yeah. supermarket and you've got less on the plate. Yeah. And you didn't use the peas. I decided against it. I don't think they would blend it well with the avocado in the end. I like it and I don't like it. You've given us an avocado puree that probably could do with a lot more seasoning. But overall, I think you've, I think you've executed something quite nice and it looks pretty. So, well done. Thank you. Jean is hoping to win praise with her lemongrass marinated tiger prawns, spicy potatoes and hot masala sauce. Did you clean the prawns? Yeah. Did you them? Yeah. They're not cleaned. You would like it. Quite hot. <laughs> very, very hot. Yeah. Your spice are raw, and some of them are burned. For me, it's very average fish. You were doing goat cheese. Yeah. You were really good. Okay. I thought I'll get something. Sorry about that. Yeah, this, this for me is just going to overpower everything else. And then the details of not having DV and the prawns, Brigine, and. I know. Yeah, it's definitely fallen short. We expect more from you. Yeah. Oh, really, Mac. That sauce is just like rocket fuel. Yeah. And I think this is maybe the, the worst issue that you've done for us. It's hard. It's disappointing. Um, I think um, my head is on, on the chopping board. I do think my dish was the weakest in there today by far. Pierce is hoping to impress with his spice-crusted fillet of sea bass, mint and fennel rice, and blended masala sauce. Fish is good draw right, right? But your spices are burned. Your sauce needs more seasoning to bring up the spices. You didn't, you didn't taste that sauce because there was no kick in that sauce today. Yeah, I actually, I, I did taste it, and then I tried to get more flavour into it, but I just didn't get enough into it. It's just way too light. It doesn't actually gives nothing to the actual dish. It's it, it, it's okay, Pierce. You know, okay. It's, it's, it's good takeaway food at best. 
I thought I had done a decent enough job, but obviously not. My dish wasn't wasn't up to scratch. Um, so, a bit disappointed. I must say, this is a very nice, colourful-looking dish. Okay. And finally, Claire Anne is presenting her warm chicken and sesame-coated prawn salad with okra and mouli and a pomegranate and mint yogurt. The chicken is not tasting very good. Oh. Okay. And prawn has no flavours of spices inside. It's not working for me. Okay. I think that's very good. I think you thought about it. It's refreshing. I think that was a great attempt for this invention test. I like that you've tried the okra. I like that you've tried a few different things here. But I do feel that ultimately there's just too much going on. And I think that you need to eat the dish from start to finish and tell me that they all marry and belong together. OK. Because they don't. OK. OK. Thank, Thank you, you. Clara. Thank you, Clara. Thanks very much. I think the fact that two of the judges out of three weren't very pleased with my dish means that I have to face up to the fact that there's a strong possibility I could be eliminated. So, Pierce, you've been grasping, and it just didn't live up to the mark, did it? It was just yeah. quite bizarre. I had so much more hope for him. Sunil was very frustrated. It took him nearly a half an hour to send out ten, ten plates of dessert, which is just not good enough. enough. Too long. Clear on, back to our wacky self. All those herbs and a raw lime, and then frying it off, and it was just so bitter, and she's just too heavy-handed. Take away all that fussiness and the underlying elements of that dish, there was something there. Christine has just fought every step of the way. You know, what she cooked today was light. Well, she did the clever thing, because she didn't go too far from what she learned yesterday. She's done really well yeah, today. Yeah, I totally agree. She's done really well. Shane. I want to shake him. What do you have to do to get a great dish out of him again? And he gets confused, he panics. I mean, his dish today was just so bad. It was actually, it was the worst dish of the competition. It's just a level of inconsistency that, that doesn't deserve any reward. Now, Brigitte, I think today she really lost her bottle. What she did today was a disaster. She wasn't tasting, she was going along. I mean, she seems to get very upset when we have to break down what she's mm. done, but yet, yeah, I don't know why she cares that much if she's going to produce such bad food. What I like about Mary is that she's being consistent. She went from having an abundance of ingredients to having three, and I just thought that was so commendable. If you think about it, if you refine that dish, you could actually quite happily see that on an Anders menu. I think Mike just made the mistake of not really understanding what we were looking for. It was just curry. There again, the taste was there. Popdoms were OK. You're going to give him points for Popdoms? No, I'm going to give him points for Popdoms, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is... Burton and bread, Popdoms, no salt in the rice. They we're left with a bowl of curry. Mike needs a good shake. After a gruelling two days of challenges, the weakest contestant will soon have to hang up their Master Chef apron and go home. Yesterday was service in Ananda, and today was the invention test. Some of you got the invention test, and some of you didn't. Shane Pierce, will you please step forward? Pierce. Yes, sir. Yesterday, your service was very unorganized. You didn't have a lot to do, and you seemed to run into trouble very quickly. Ultimately, we were very disappointed. Shane, your curry today seriously showed us your cooking weaknesses. Pierce and Shane. Both of you can go no further in the competition. Please leave the Master Chef kitchen and hang up your aprons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys.
best of you. We still have a long way to go, and we have to see higher standard results from all of you. Please, for today, leave the Master Chef kitchen. Thank you. Feeling disappointed, obviously, but uh, absolutely thrilled to have got this far. So it's joint sixth in Master Chef. Can't complain about that, you know. It's not going to stop me, you know. Hopefully, it's a dream. Op open up that gastropub, get involved in food. You know, it's a passion, and I, that's why I loved it. Next time on Master Chef. Just leave me alone for just a couple of minutes, please. The contestants come back fighting. This is fantastic. That is what you call sexy food. It's at an, a level I haven't seen in the competition yet. And a guest judge sets hearts racing. If you go 30 seconds too much on this fish dish, I'm going to send you home.